Hello and welcome to Brian's God Game. I'm Brian, and today I've got a game called Chronicles of Crime, the Millennium Series 1400. 1400 is similar to the original Chronicles of Crime by Lucky Duck Games and is a standalone cooperative game for one to four players. This is the first of three games in the, in the Millennium Series and takes place in the medieval France. Players assume the role of a knight who has a gift of having visions of the crimes before they occur. This game makes use of a companion app to download the scenarios, search the crime scene with VR glasses, and scan QR codes to get information about the people, items you find, and enables travel to different locations. At the time of this filming, there are four scenarios for Chronicles of Crime 1400. Each has a unique story and guides the players through an immersive mystery set in Paris. So let's check it out, and I'll show you how to set up the game, talk about the new elements, and give you our thoughts with no spoilers of Chronicles and Crime 1400. To set up, open your little pack and set out the main game board. So this board is very similar to the one in the original game. Uh, it's different in the way that it's not a board, it's a little uh, dossier kind of thing. Um, and then you have this red area for clues that you have in your possession, and then this blue area for clues that you know about but don't have. Um, then next in setup would be you'd set out uh, your home area, and I'm going to place that at the bottom of the board, and then you take all of the rest of the areas and set them off to the side. So on your home area, this is different from the original game. Normally in the original game, you had different cards with people that you could talk to. So this is your home. You scan that QR code to go to your home. And then you have your three family members. This is your, uh, your brother, the spy, and he knows about people. This is your sister, the merchant. She knows about things. And then this is your uncle, the monk, and he knows about written materials. Um, so that's useful in the game. And you scan each QR codes to talk to them. Uh, next, you would pull out your trusty, uh, I would say Steve, but he's your dog, uh, Percival, and you can ask him about items and he could lead you to people uh, in the area where you are, which is helpful uh, when uh, scanning clues. And then you also have the rest of the characters used for the game, and I'm going to set those off to the side. Then you can take uh, the items and the clues. These are all numbered and have QR codes, um, various different items and clues, and I'm just going to set those off to the side too. Uh, the app tells you when to pull those out, and then there are some special ones with the stars. And these don't have words on them, but instead have pictures. Those look cool. Set that to the side. Then, the last new addition to this game are the vision cards. So, uh, you as the player, the knight, um, have visions uh, of the game. So, let's say, for instance, the first, uh, the first scenario has you look at the first four or five uh, visions. And you look at them, and it gives you details and uh, things about the game. And here, I'll show you the first one. It's not a whole lot of spoiler. Uh, but it just has different scenarios and shows you people that you'll interact with later in the game. So they help you and help uh, guide what questions to ask people um, and then kind of give you a look into the future about the crime. Okay, got my dad here for parents' opinion. So dad, what did you think of Chronicles of Crime, the Millennium Series, 1400? <laughs> has a very long title. Just uh, a little bit. No, I, I, really, I really had a fun time with this one. I like the base game. Um, I also like history. Uh, mm -hmm. and specifically medieval type stuff. And so this one was right down my alley. Yeah. Um, I had a lot of uh, fun playing it too. I don't know a whole lot about the 1400 uh, era. I don't know if you do, but it was, a, it was really cool. You were talking <laughs> to all the different people and you had the, like the alchemists and the physicians and then um, the dukes and stuff. And it was cool to be able to talk to like the medieval people. And that was fun. Uh, and then having the different thing with your family was cool, too. Yeah, I think I like that better. Like, in their base game, like, everybody picks a character. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can always go ask a person. This one was yeah, a Yeah, because little... you could just call them up and be like, do it on your turn normally. Yeah, you yeah, like somebody anymore. was the criminologist and somebody was the, you know, hacker. And some, and so now it, it kind of just, everybody's just acting as one person. Mm -hmm. Um and so I, I kind of thought that was a little bit better as a, as a co-op game. Yeah. And then the main difference doing it this way is before you just call them up and that waste no time. This one, in order to go talk to your family members, you have to spend the 20 minutes to, to go, go to your home, talk to all the people, and then if you want to go back out there, spend another 20 minutes. So that's a while. Um, but yeah, uh, let's jump right into the components. So uh, in the last segment, we showed you all of the components. Uh, you've got the main board in the center, all of the different suspect cards and the clues, and then the special star clues. Um, yeah, the main board was a little flimsy, like it wasn't a board anymore. Yeah. Like, I don't think the other one was a board, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, it was. 
um, I mean, they did make this one look kind of like it was a leather, uh, you know, journal or something, um, which they still could have done if it was a board. I don't know if it was a cost thing or what. Yeah. Um, but what I really liked was the feel. They did kind of a soft, mm -hmm. uh, a soft finish on the locations and all the cards and all and the everything. cards, and it's awesome. Yeah, it wasn't like a linen thing; it was just smooth. Yeah, I don't know what that's called because <laughs> I'm not in publishing. Um, but books started doing that. I noticed in the last five years or so, they they mm -hmm. kind of come with a real soft. Uh, oh soft yeah, like touch on the cover. It. Yep. Okay. Like on a hard cover. Yeah. Um. And that's most of the components, just a bunch of cards and then the board. Um, the main component is the app that they have free on the app stores that you just download and then you scan all the QR codes. Yeah, we didn't have any problems with the app uh, you know, yeah. crashing or We've anything. had some problems before. Well, no, that was a different game. Never mind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so <laughs> no, they do... No problems with the cause of crime app. Yeah, they do a really good job yeah. you know, with that you know, digital side. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they're always updating it. Like today when you know, we were playing, I noticed that it they did an update and it had the next two games in the millennium series oh, on there cool. grayed out said coming in 2021 <laughs> so that's cool yeah they are you know, still active, working on it actively working the app yep yeah uh so then i the real place where this one shines is the artwork because it's it's a bunch of cards but what makes them special is all the art on them because it has individual art for all the different characters and they're all really well done faces and then uh, all the clues are just words, but yeah. good font design. <laughs> <laughs> I <really> did. <laughs> yeah, it was a good unctual font. They really did in line with the manuscript and the pen. Yeah, no. Um, I The art of this one, I love. Mm -hmm. um, the art in the original one, it was a little more realistic. Mm -hmm. um, it had a lot of like harsh lines. Um, yeah. It wasn't really my thing, but this one I absolutely love. I don't know who they did, who they got to do the art. Um, but it, I, I really like it. It's, it's really yeah. good and it fits in with the theme, uh, and the time period and mm -hmm. everything's on kind of parchment. Yeah. Um, and it just, it just looks great. And then the other place, uh, where the art is that I don't think we noticed in, uh, any other Chronicles of Crime videos that we've done is, uh, in the app because it has you look through your phone, either with the VR oh, yeah, goggles yeah. that you get in some extra pack or just looking through your phone, like a little window. Um, is the virtual world where you go search for clues, and that has good artwork as well. Yeah, yeah, that's another cool thing that we didn't really talk about. You know, when you put the app in there, it, you know, looking around and being able to see in the, you know, the three D world, it's just mm -hmm. a really neat thing to to add to your board game. Um, typically, there's two, you know, crime scenes in that every scenario at. that yeah. you get to look at. Um, I think we missed one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On one of the scenarios, we didn't do very well. <laughs> yeah. We hadn't played in a while, and we picked it up, and it, I don't I don't know. Maybe if the app could blink a little bit more, but we completely yeah. missed the little green thing that says, look around. Yeah, I think we were used to seeing the solve the case one and just ignored it. <laughs> yeah. But no, they, yeah, the, the VR the, it, it is a really neat thing, especially when you're playing with kids. They get to look around. Mm -hmm. You know, they like to look around and, and yeah. see what's going on. And even just on the game design aspect of that that's really cool is being able to look into it and name off the things you're saying and all the people are finding the clues that you're seeing and i think that's a really cool way to get the clues out there yep um on a strategy uh there's a couple of different ways you could go in this because you need to find the right paths to know what's going on and figure out the case but you also don't want to try every one and make, waste time yeah generally that's what we do <laughs> <laughs> And, and we still miss the important we, we part. We wasted a lot of time. No, with the very first scenario, so the, the very first scenario, they have an easy, medium, and hard one. So mm -hmm. the very first one, we got over 100%, yep. which was the first time we've ever done that. So that was awesome. Um, but then we just did a medium one um, today, and, and yeah, we completely missed something. I don't know yeah. where, where it was. Um, <laughs> but we got some of the things right. <laughs> but, but that was fun. Yeah, uh, so I, don't, I, I mean, I don't know. There's a whole lot of strategy there. I mean, you just kind of have to pay attention. This one with the vision cards, you really mm -hmm. need to look at the vision cards yeah. because it'll kind of give you clues, and you'll you you'll you'll see some of the people mm -hmm. in there, and that kind of helps you in the story. Yeah. Um, and then Percival, we didn't really use Percival in the game that we played today for yeah. some reason. Well, that may be why we missed something. Maybe but. so he does three things. So he will either smell an item and do nothing. He'll smell an item and take you somewhere and lead you to a person. 
um, or to a location, or he'll lead you to a person that's in the area that you're in. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that way you can kind of, I don't know, it's, an, it's another way to get help uh, from, you know, from somebody. And it's, it's yeah. kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Generally, most of the people in the game kind of don't like your dog. But <laughs> yeah. Get that dog out of here. You're making a mess. I'll have to clean up. <laughs> Poor Percival. Yep. Uh, and then Easy for Kids, I mean, it's a crime game, and there's some, I don't know, just stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, they do They do a good job of putting some warnings on yeah, the scenarios. Yeah, they tell you what's what kind of stuff is in each one, and they're mo- they're pretty clean. Yeah, and I, mean, I don't know. I mean, if you're playing with kids, and you're worried about language or whatever, and you're, you're the one reading, like, you just don't say the words or whatever. Um, but yeah, sometimes there are references um, to more graphic content or there you know the one that they there was like a dead body or whatever and mm-hmm. i don't know if that was in the warnings or, or whatever but yeah um i think generally this is one that's fun to play with a family um just because it's co-op mm-hmm. and you can get kids involved um but yeah i mean there is kind of a little bit of i mean these are crimes well, yeah it's a, it's a crime <laughs> game i mean <laughs> so, a little bit realistic there yeah uh so anyways i mean if that's a concern for you you know you can either you know not do that one uh, or, you know, filter it yourself you yeah. know, as you're reading. Um, but really where this one shines is all the art, because that's what it is. It's an experience, and you're looking at all the art and figuring out, that's the guy that killed him, <laughs> and uh, going on through the story, figuring stuff out. So overall, I had a lot of fun playing Chronicle, uh, this specific one, uh, 1400, and and the other ones too. But <laughs> Yeah, so th- this one on the Kickstarter, uh, they mentioned... Um, so there's three of them. There's 1,400, 1,900, and 2,400. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we haven't played the other two, but there was some information on the Kickstarter page that said that there is something that kind of pulls all three of them together. So I'm really interested in seeing what, what that is. <laughs> A little teaser there for you. Sweet. Uh, so I, we can end on that then, because that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's uh, Chronicles of Crime 1,400 by Lucky Duck Games. Uh, thank you for watching. Brian's Got Game. Please like us on our Facebook page. Send us a tweet at Brian's Got Game. Visit our webpage, Brian's Got Subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Brian. This is my dad, and I'll see you next time.